<laughs> Guys. <laughs> All right, let's go. So which character officially are you calling yourself this season? <laughs> I always start with the Barton. I've always, uh, my, 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 my um, point of, you guys are all like, you guys write, right? And you're journalists, so my point of departure, is that a good, mm-hmm. it's always the reverse flash. So we're just going to call you Mr. Reverse this season? I mean, you can call me what you want, <laughs> and I know you will. How long did it take to get comfortable with, with, with referring to yourself as the reverse flash? Comfortable is a strange way of, uh, of putting it. Uh, there was never any discomfort. The reason I uh, signed on to the show was to do that. Okay. Do that role. Um, yeah, from uh, uh, this is my third show with, with Greg, and they said we have something that we think that uh, you will enjoy, and um, I thought to talk to those guys, and that's what they went with. That's uh, why I signed. So I guess comfort level at 100%. 100%. All right. Short answer. Sound bite. Are we going to see Professor Wells? Professor Wells, can you talk a little bit about? I can. Um, can I? I'm trying to remember what we can divulge and what we can't. That should kind of answer the question there, shouldn't it? <laughs> can I? I don't know if I can say anything about it. Um, Harrison Wells, I feel, is uh, one of the very uh, few elements that um, doesn't exist in the mythology. If uh, any of you are actually fans of the of the, of the comic book, comic book, The Flash, um, or knowledgeable about it, a lot of what we do is adhere to uh, you know 80 plus years of mythology. But Harrison Wells was an introduction um, and uh, 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 kind of an important part of our. Genesis story. Um, we did not change the fact that, you know, he, uh, how he gained his powers initially and how all that is, is true, but the Harrison Wells element was a kind of an added thing which helped us um, hide the, uh, the villainy of uh, and where, where uh, which thong was the good thong and which thong was the bad thong, um, which ended up being a big part of our season, season finale. So, that that device, I think we of uh, <clears throat> using Harrison Wells to do that. We, we, we I think we employed that in full full measure last year, and so this year we'll probably take a different tack, but in some ways a not too dissimilar tack. That's a guy answering a question, saying nothing, and talking for a long time. <laughs> what are you most excited for with season two of The Flash? What are you looking forward to the most? Do you think characters will be the most pleasantly surprised by with Harrison? Uh, well, for me. Probably the most enjoyable part of uh, of doing this uh, this show is putting on putting on the suit. I always look forward to uh, putting on the suit. Um, I like the uh, I like the action and the activity, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and oftentimes um, yeah, we put in a lot of uh, a lot of time with uh, Harrison Wells in the chair last year mm-hmm. um, to earn the the payoff with the with the act, with the activity. I personally enjoy um, sometimes this uh, show gets robust and athletic, and those are some of my favorite moments. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us how long you're going to be gone since you got sucked up into the hole? And is it a big gap before you return to episodes? Or? Um, I would say uh, we've come out of the gate uh, with, with a flurry already in filming, and I've been part of that. What did he say? Did he answer? Did he not answer? (laughs) Is the wheelchair completely gone this season? What do you think? I think it's gone, but that's just me. I think I think maybe you're right and maybe you're wrong. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you're going to get that answer fairly soon. Why would I spoil it for the tens of people that want to get that answer while watching? (laughs) They don't have to read our stuff. (laughs) What do they do? But they can't help themselves, huh? They can't resist. They can't resist. I was talking to my, uh, uh, my friend who's 13 years old, son of my, uh, one of my best friends, and uh, he's just up till four in the morning going through it all. You know, it really does, what you do really has an effect, especially on this, uh, 
um, one of our favorite demographics. And one of our favorite demographics is the, the, the youth demographic, and this is the first show I've done that has, I feel, spanned. Where you get legitimate interest out of somebody, a woman or a man who's in their 40s and 50s, but have, I've grown up with this stuff, and now they're seeing an age where it can actually be produced to full effect on television because of the technological advances that we have made, and also, you know, somebody who's like 10 to 14 who loves this stuff and now this is the embodiment that we're, when I was growing up it was just a comic book and now, now it's this and that what you do is you know there's channels and pathways that feed both those people it's really fun to watch you know um, the 14 year old talking about what he's read and what has you know the idea that I think this is going to happen and he gets it from you know he gets it from you so it's nice it's good it's nice to see it's a whole little it's a mesh of all the different the technological and digital advances since I've been doing this and it's fun to watch it is there a surprise how immediate it was how immediate that reaction came about it's, yeah because it's because that's the age right this whole thing is so popular on its own level and social media only just furthers it and this is a generation that has known nothing but most of us, I mean, some of you are young, but most of us here have known Come. without it and known good. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Finish your answer and then yeah. you get a I think that was, that was yeah, yeah.